Hey, James. Hey, Sean. How you doing? Pretty good today. What's happening? Today, we're going to go buy some coffee beans. then before we can go into town and get ourselves some coffee beans we need to be aware that this is an urban environment populated by the sane sane people have a problem when meeting wogs who are dressed as though they have form function and purpose therefore it is necessary to disguise yourself to be able to walk amongst them without drawing undue attention okay now we've donned our civilian attire this is quite obviously not military issue kit and you are therefore peaceful to anyone who sees you you have your watch on you have a white t-shirt on White t-shirts are universal around the world and pretty much of North American culture. A set of blue jeans. Any particular make or model is fine, but blue jeans are recognized internationally as civilian attire. Therefore, you are friendly. There are no problems with your indigenous populace. Also, desert boots work very well as a perfectly, perfectly good urban walking environment boot. You are now capable with your belt, your keys, and various essential gear you're able to infiltrate and move amongst the people of the sane environment. We're outside of 10,000 Villages. This is an organization which was originally established by a Mennonite church, and what they do is they travel around the world. They find home decor, collectibles, signatures, gifts, toys and games, and coffee beans, which are sold at ethically traded prices. Ethical trading or fair trading is what it means is, is that they don't like hire people in these countries that are destitute. One, They don't take advantage of them for 10 cents on the dollar. They actually pay them a fair market share for whatever goods they purchase. When we go inside this store here, there's all manner of bric-a-brac and knick-knacks, which you buy at a larger name brand store, but instead of actually, you know, imprisoning people in slave camp type environments, they're encouraging the third world to better themselves and pull themselves up. So let's take a look at what they got inside. Now as you look around inside here, you'll see that there's all manner of goods in here. This is the same kind of stuff you'd buy at a company like, say, uh, oh, uh, I can't think of any names right now, and it's probably a good thing. There's a lot of these companies that import stuff from Indonesia, Pakistan, Africa. A lot of these countries where people are just, you know, literally life is cheap and people do anything to survive. So rather than being predatory as a market nature on these smaller countries and these indigenous peoples, these people are actually helping these people. Now I'm sure that I'm not too familiar with their corporate structure, and I'm sure that they're not exactly, you know, completely painted with gold either. But no matter, even if they do a couple of things wrong. The fact is, is the basis of their company, the basis of their organization is upon helping people, not upon exploiting them to make money. This is a very, very good business model because it is has longevity. When you screw people over, in the short term you get gain, but long term you get no gain. Long term solution is to help people at the ground level. These are fairly traded chocolate covered coffee beans from JustUsCoffee.com. Chocolate covered coffee beans are the wog food of choice. Why? Because they actually have negative calories. They make you go fast, providing the sugar to let you carry on to achieve your objective. Very, very handy snack, highly portable, will fit inside any of your gear. Do not use it as a stimulant for more than three days or you will begin to hallucinate. The Kung Fu outfit. Yes, the beautiful and famed Sean Kennedy Kung Fu outfit. What is the point of the Kung Fu outfit Sean. Well, this is several thousand years of Chinese engineering to make the most comfortable clothing possible for daily wear. Now, when you're inside your own home, you have privacy, which means, really, you could walk around naked if you wanted to. The problem with walking around naked is, is that I do not possess as much body hair as my ancestors, therefore you get cold. Now, you could turn up the heating in your house and then walk around naked, but again, it gets expensive. And furthermore, Jehovah Witnesses come to your front door and they get somewhat distraught when you answer the door naked. I don't know why they do that, because you are in your own house and you should be able to answer the door naked. However, apparently a lot of the Christian organizations don't like naked people. So, for those of you wondering why the Kung Fu outfit is an accessory I choose to employ, that is what I use as my house clothes.
clothing. House clothing is a tradition which was, oh, probably from about the 1930s and prior. Whenever people would be in their homes, they would have house clothing they would wear around the house. This shows that now is a relaxation time. Your home should be an area for you to relax. You shouldn't have to go out to relax. Why would you need to go to a club where there's driving music and you can't hear anything and you're fed alcohol to relax? Ridiculous. You should stay at home and be able to read. You should be able to watch films. You should be able to enjoy media that you choose to. And to do this, you should be as comfortable as possible. I highly recommend the Kung Fu outfit to anyone who's looking for something to lounge around in. Instead of track pants or clothing that has logos on it and things like that. So, I have chosen to don the Kung Fu outfit. It allows me a complete range of motion while remaining comfortable and yet somewhat stylish. Right. Now, the thing is, we have the problem of hair. I specifically have a huge problem with hair. I mean, look at all this. This is, uh, this is fro action on the go here. So, I've been thinking about the haircut. Now, the haircut's the greatest rip-off there ever was. I mean, you're paying, even if you go to some bargain joint, you're paying eight bucks to get someone who's, like, you know, you know, half retarded cut your hair, and they're gonna mess it up, and you're gonna go pay another eight bucks, or probably sixteen bucks, to get somebody to fix it. I mean, how many people have done that? So, you know what? I think that, uh, haircuts on the whole are nothing more than fashion. Really. I mean, what, what is the point of having your hair cut? Uh, why not just grow it super long? Well, it gets mangy and unmanageable. And actually, hair is really dirty. Hair is disgusting. Dreadlocks are sick. There's animals and shit living in dreadlocks. Yeah, you're all cool and rasta, but your hair is rotting and you're festering like shit in your hair. Okay, so that's not cool. So you gotta try to keep the hair clean. Now, I have the worst hair on the planet, easily. Christian Bale and I, we have a problem. And that is that we have really, really hardcore, curly, curly, thick, like Italian hair going on on my head. Like, seriously, I can stuff a quilt with it. So, all my life, I've been trying to figure out what the best haircut is for me. Add to this the fact I'm a big geek. So, it's really, really hard to come up with, like, a badass haircut. So, I just stopped caring about what other people thought and went with what went and made sense. What does it do? Your hair is there for a purpose. What is its function? So, if you're going to get a haircut, why do you want, what, what kind of haircut you should get should be based upon what you're going to be doing. I, in the Army, learned that, you know, hair is a big hassle. You want to be able to get up, throw some water on your face, keep some water off the top of your head and go from there. So what they do, a lot of guys, they go with the high and tight, right? Where they keep it in close around the head. And that's an amazing experience unto itself. Anybody who's ever, if you've never had super short hair, I will show you right now how to give yourself a heck of a trip. The best day to do this is the first day of spring so you've got a good summer cut and you can maintain that maybe uh, twice a month. You want to cut your hair twice a month. And that way it never looks like you've had a severe operation. The first time you do it, no one will have any questions that you've become like, you know, you're going hardcore wog, but that's how it works. So, why are we here? <laughs> why, why did you come here today? Why did I come here? Yeah. You're looking to get a haircut. What is your name? What is, what's your online name? Prozio. Prozio. Ah, yeah. That was a dumb fucking question on my behalf. Before we go any further, I want you, I want you to talk to the camera, give your, your online name, and a brief bio about yourself, okay? You got nothing to do with me. Alright, I'm Prozium. I'm 23 years old. I am a security guard from Abbotsford, BC. I'm uh, here to get my uh, wog haircut. That's about all I can say. Cool. I am going to need a towel, Nate. So I spilled my tasty beverage, which is terribly bad for me and slowly poisoning and rotting away my bones all over the goddamn counter. You will get in the chair. Last chance. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. I'm up for this. Lean forward, freaky. Freaky. Lean back. Okay. Coat's off. You're going to get so much people talking so much shit about you, it is going to blow your fucking mind how much everyone seems to know about you. So why get your hair cut? Why get my hair cut? A number, okay. number of different reasons. Such as? First of all, I know how much respect people.